My name is Keith Wilson and the title of the exhibition is Calendar. This is the final work in a long series which has been using a similar unit, a kind of grid unit, a cube, and within it testing the limits of what an object can mean. Calendar is about time and about space and about how we're contained by time and space and how we live in days. And Again, it's, it, it's to get into the process of production to understand how you end up with a cube. I didn't set out to make a cube. I was making pens and in the making of a bidding stand, a stand on which you might stand to buy a pig or a sheep or something. I ended up with one unit, which was a cube. And I liked this cube. And then suddenly that let me do all the cube works. So before this, I've done periodic table and then the elements can stand in. And and it's just astonishing, there's only 118 odd elements. I mean, I've got that many things in my shed. The whole universe, as far as anyone can imagine, has only these number of things in. So just making it 3D was, and then filling it up. Uh, so carbon was a telly or the kettle was hydrogen. What's the most basic thing in the studio? It's, it's your kettle. Or, and you start to build a world, which is a parallel world to, let's say, that system of ordering. And it throws you back on how you order your life and how much of it is, how much you're free to invent your life and how much it's inevitable that everyone buys a kettle when they get a studio. And is that a happy thing or a sad thing? Or what do we do about that? Um, and so at the end of this long series of doing numbers with a hopscotch, vertical hopscotch, and a ziggurat of alphabet, then I ended up doing calendar. So it's this idea of space and time and the very counterintuitive um, idea that space and time are somehow the same and that and yet we live in such contained ways such a con, such a confident and arbitrary kind of measure of calendar um, and this calendar is about the size of my studio so so the the object that's built i think of as the four walls of my studio and the interesting thing about a studio wall is that it faces in and it faces out so even as you're looking at your painting, you're imagining it facing the world. Um, the, especially through modernism, Cezanne's studio had out, out of the window the hills that were being painted. And th it's this slippery fish of a studio. Um, and I always want to then investigate what that is and whether it's trustworthy or not. So half the stuff which is in calendar in the studio is my stuff and the other half is other people's stuff. So I set a, um, a project up where I invited members of the public to bring one thing no bigger than your head um, to the gallery. And this was at the Welcome Collection. So the idea of a collection and maybe a background idea that, yes, it was a venue that did arty things, but it also did medical things. It was quite good. because So we opened, in effect, the Welcome Collection empty and then filled it up via members of the public. So people brought things in, they told their story. Um, and that's all available. The website's here. So you can track around and some of these objects will be photographed and the detail of the story will be there and some won't be visible and you'll have to speculate around them and some will be familiar and some will be illegible and um, I used to do these big gridded stuffed canvases with objects in which look pretty much no different to what's out there um, and it was in a way the attachment to the object and the range of significances which could be applied to the object and then the formal characteristics of the object and how that could be sent through juxtaposition into some other conversation. It was also um, maybe categorical. So, so this, this kind of interrelation of objects or this class of meaning applied to material uh, was something that went across cultures and that, what, that was both local and personal and generic and, and maybe part of a broader understanding of the human condition. So that drew me into the reality of the object as being at the heart of the work rather than maybe a representation which felt um, uh, more determined about an interpretation. So I, t I tend to lay things out and I don't really reveal a position in relation to them because I want to visit them and see what I think they mean. Recent works I've tended to work partly outdoors and in the public realm as it were and in the studio and in the gallery. And in a way, this triangulation is something that's interested me for a long time. Um, say, for example, a piece I'm doing at the moment is, is helping to build a sculpture park in Park Hill. So this is a, 
uh, post-war social housing, classic kind of iconic. Um, where do we live? How do we live? What's good for life? What makes life better? What makes life work? And what sculpture's part in that? What, what are the jobs that the world might ask of sculpture, of an object? And I've got an interest, I suppose, in, in the long history of sculpture doing jobs of work. Um, and here, in a way, it's borrowing on the language of an estate which worked and then didn't work to attempt to revivify the environment. So it's not regeneration, which is what might be happening on the site, but what culture can do is, is pull back a different history and go again. On this occasion, I've also stepped outside of the gallery and we've put a piece called Dog Pen for Cats um, out in Boys Park, which is just around the corner. So it's, you've got the cathedral, you've got the art school, you've got the gallery. Um, in the gallery, you've got the studio, and now you've got the dog pen. And the dog pen looks, familiar, looks similar to the work that's in the studio. It is a matter of stepping one side out of the institution so that someone is interested in this thing, which, if it's a dog pen, why hasn't it got a door? I mean, it's a mean old dog, and it's a mean old dog. That's a big pen. Um, and I don't know, you could imaginatively get a long way just with dog pen if, you, if it's not your habit to come to a gallery. And you could get there without having an art historical background and without having to have those thoughts. So I think whenever I work outside, you have to take the rules of outside. Then in the gallery, again, there's a game going on between whether the studio's frame in the gallery or the gallery's frame in the studio. Again, can you go? Well, you can go in, but it's a bit of a squeeze. You've got to be a bit of a cat to come and go into the space. When you're in the space, the work is all looking in at you, and you can see this is for me. The entire, and it, on the outside of the space, you can see that anyway, even without going in, that things are facing in. Um, but of course, it's untrustworthy because you can see them facing in through the wall that's facing out. So it's a slippery experience, but it's quite ordered. And I like the idea that, that people might, through their imaginative resistance, decide not to do any of the above. And that's a result. <laughs>